How's everybody doing today? I certainly hope you're doing well. Now, seeing that a lot of you have accused Monty of being in the intelligence services, I figured what better way to kind of like break the ice and to share with the class what are the employment requirements to work for the CIA. Now, you see, the CIA deals with matters abroad. In other words, for the CIA to be working within the United States is a big no-no. Uh-uh. No. That agency is used for operations overseas or other countries. Okay? So, while we have our little chatty do here, the reason why I decided to do this video predominantly is because you have this one over here accusing that one over there and accusing all these different people of working for the CIA. Maybe they're accusing somebody you know online working for the CIA. So I figured, you know something? I'm going to share with the class, seeing that I've sought the information, have it all memorized, and please, for any investigator out there or researcher, please check my work, because I pride myself on good research. So let's go ahead and go through it. To work for the CIA, which stands for the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America, it is quite difficult to get your foot in the door. So, let's go ahead and go through the basic requirements and how you were to go about it in the case you wanted to work for the CIA. I will leave the links down below. Now, the first thing is you must be 35 years of age or younger to even apply. You're not going to get in if you're my age, that's for sure. Now, of course, there are CIA agents running around that are in their 40s or 50s or maybe early 60s even, but I suppose they're very good CIA agents. And they are in those positions in order to teach the younger classes coming in. Okay? It's just a guess, don't know, not really sure. Okay? As far as that aspect goes. The second thing is, you must have at least a BA, a college degree. If you don't have one of those, don't even bother, because they won't even look at you. They smile on people that are multilingual, that speak more than one language. Now, the application aspect of it is extremely difficult. You will be sent to a website, at least one of the websites is called brainbench.com, where you will take a very long-winded online test which is going to show some sort of aptitudes to see what you're strong in, what your weaknesses are, and all that stuff. Another thing that the CIA does as you're applying, it's a two-year process. Two years. They go digging around in your past. They go digging around in all of your school. They go digging around all the way back to kindergarten. They interview the people that you know the best, your friends and your family, your employers, your employees, or co-workers, right? And they do too. Oh, man. They also require you to take a polygraph in which they ask so many personal questions and that information, you can bet your ass, will be used against you either during the application itself or even later as maybe a test. You just don't know. They will not, under any circumstance, hire anyone that has had some sort of recent drug addiction or financial problems. So I can imagine if your FICO score is low, forget it. You're not going to even get in the first phase. As far as the pay goes, the pay is between forty and $95,000. So let's do some math, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say you are an incredible computer programmer. Let's say you're writing your own scripts. Let's say you're writing your own apps, your own applications, everything. 
uh, you don't want to work for the CIA because you're not going to make any money, dude. Okay, forget it. It's a joke. $95,000, that's nothing. For somebody who is a extremely affluent programmer, uh, they'd laugh at that. Now, here's another problem with it. If you're working for the CIA and you're working as an agent abroad, overseas, in another country, um, you got a problem. And the reason why you have a problem is you're not making very good pay. If you are captured by the enemy or a competitor, depending on what you're doing, because there's a lot of what is called corporate espionage going on all the time. My goodness. So if you're caught and captured by the enemy or a corporate enemy, the CIA will say, we don't know that guy. You see what I mean? Your identification is not going to have your name on it. It's going to have a number and a bunch of letters. You got me? It's not going to say, oh, hey, I'm Bob. You know, it's not going to have your date of birth and your social security now, all that garbage. It's just not. So, just think about that. So, to become a CIA agent is extremely difficult. It truly is. Let's say you're going through a human-to-human -human interview because you got to jump through all the other hoops just to get to that point. And let's say you're extremely knowledgeable in Latin American affairs. Well, don't think they're going to ask you questions about Latin America. They'll ask you questions about Eastern Europe. You got me? Try to trick you like that. <laughs> because they want to make sure that they have somebody that is of higher intelligence than the average Joe. Because if you're just an average Joe, you're not getting in, bud. That's just the way it goes. Now, there are several different people associated or within the CIA that are not just computer programmers. Maybe they're dealing in religious matters. Maybe they're dealing in economics. Maybe they're dealing in whatever field that they're dealing in. Chances are they're a multilingual and chances are they don't have time to come to YouTube and start screwing around on the internet. You see what I mean? So the chances of Dutchie over there being a CIA agent or Professor Doom is a CIA or Dabu, oh my god, you know Dabu's one, right? <laughs> Wrong. The main classification to become a CIA agent is to keep a secret. These guys are not keeping secrets. Hell, you got Dutchie tattling on harp all the time, right? And tattling on all the things they're doing with the, the, the weather and the earth movements and all that stuff. And it's just shaming the hell out of all these scientists and such. He's in the news again, yet again. <laughs> You got Doom, he's like, he's like pointing all, out all the inconsistencies to all these shootings. He can't keep a secret. You got Dabu putting out between 8 and 12 videos a day, tattling on all of them, right? Everywhere. You got Monty over here acting like a lunatic, doing whatever I'm doing. We don't work for the CIA, pal. You got that? There's no way. <laughs> uh, maybe we're working in the CIA, the, the non-secret department. You know, where we got the full disclosure CIA department. Not really sure. Ah, <laughs> uh, cracks me up. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm going to leave a link down below where you can go check it out. I'll also leave the link to Brain Bench. That is where you take the uh, the online test. You can go peruse around. I'll, I'll, I think you have to you have to get a code in order to take the, the CIA test. Uh, it's a long winder too, man. It's like it's alphanumeric. It's like uh, 35 characters. I mean, it's outrageous. It's 
is long-winded for sure. But anyway, please chime in. Please chime in. So the next time you hear anybody accusing this one and that one and that one and this one that are online showing their faces using their voices to give you either the news or things that are going on in the world, chances are they're not working for the CIA. Okay? That's the big ball of wax. I'm monographing if you can't speak freely or simply not free. Have a good day.